Strangers are warned not to venture into Manenberg. It's a township in the heart of the Cape Flats where drugs and armed gangs hold sway. Here, when the gangs fight, as many as 40 people might die in a single weekend. So most see only danger and stay well away, but not everyone. Outsiders wanting to help the people here isn't unusual, but moving here, making a life here, well, that is. Pete Portal moved here from London 10 years ago. He's been joined by his South African wife, Sarah. But that's not all. The couple also share their home with half a dozen of Manenberg's recovering gang members and drug addicts seeking a cleaner life. As a white South African, Sarah says she wants to help those apartheid harmed and do so up close and hands-on. I'm very aware that I come from white privilege, essentially, and it's something, it's a, a value of mine to figure out how to share that white privilege with people whose what could have been privilege was robbed by the apartheid government um, many years ago. And so I suppose for me, it's an easier way to make it um, more accessible to share the privilege I have, whether it's the education I have or actually the house that I have. Dozens of Manenberg's hardest men have passed through their home and the 18-month rehabilitation program they run. It involves group therapy, sport, Bible study and prayer. We've agreed to protect their identities as they still live just yards from the gangs they're trying to escape. We kind of synthesized various approaches, put it together and formed a daily program out of what we could work out seemed best approaches. Our life here is the truest response that Sarah and I can come up with to open our home and embrace those that we were told belonged in jail. And we figured, well, no, they don't. No one belongs in jail. Maybe they could belong in family. Pete helps to teach them new skills, as well as helping them overcome trauma. But he can't force them to stay sober. More have not made it than have. That used to embarrass me, or that used to um, make me very worried. And what I'm realizing increasingly is that relapse is often part of someone's recovery. We've got guys in the house who have been here two or three times before. And every time they come back, we generally see them get a little bit closer to the person they, they know they are, but are struggling to be. Though not all here are convinced about this mixture of Bible study and self-help, there's no doubt the portals have had some results. Waden is one man who found new hope and sobriety with the help of the scheme. He's now forging a new life for himself. Does this area belong to a gang? Yeah. So which gang is here? This belongs to the Dixie Boys. By 13, he was taking drugs and in a gang. You felt like a superhero being part of a gang because you got the respect of people on the streets. And how was your drug use then? My drug use, it was very high at that time, like I used a lot of meth. My rock bottom for me was thrown out by my family, living in the streets and almost got killed around the corner. How? What happened? Like somebody shot at me like six times. I thought to myself that this is enough, I had enough of this life, I have to turn my life around. Waden finally got clean for good with the portals and now helps run the programme he believes saved his life. He's one of the house supervisors and mentors. On these mean streets, the sight of a group of men walking together, Bibles in hand, is most unusual. But faith is central to this recovery program. At the heart of everything here is the church the portals have helped to grow, called the Tree of Life. This congregation embraces recovering gang members and addicts and tries to replace the ties of the gangs with a sense of belonging here. Finding faith is not compulsory to recovery, but the church is growing in number. Pete and Sarah, both committed Christians, encourage those they help to commit to a life of faith. 
Jodine, a former addict, says that's what helped her. Her son Titan is now a reason to stay well too. He attends a creche set up by the portals to help young women. Jodine says her story's proof redemption's possible. I came through the door and just for the first time in my life, I felt a hug was love from a person. What was your rock bottom moment that made you reach out for help? I overdosed. I tried to commit suicide. I was pregnant with my fourth child at that time. Where do you think you'd be if you hadn't got the help that you received? I think every day would have been a struggle for me. I think I would still be there, much worse, actually. The fact that they just take in a stranger who they just met two weeks ago and just showered him with love. It's crazy. They have so much love to give. So do you think individuals like the people from the church can make a difference to people's lives? Surely, yes. Yes. <laughs> With no doubt, <laughs> yes. Hundreds of addicts have been touched by the faith and kindness of these strangers. A few have even found lasting recovery. Like, I think individuals can make a difference in people's lives. They played a big role in my life and, like, they are a huge inspiration to me. Pete and Sarah have no more security than any of their neighbours and recognise the risks they're taking. If there is a fight, I'm probably the best person to break it up because I can stand between the guys and they won't stab me. I believe enough in the people that we love and the hope of um, what their lives could be and, and who they could become that it is a risk that, I, that is worth taking for me. It's not the violence, it's not the, it's not the physical threat. It's loving, choosing to love boys who might want to kill you, might want to hurt you, or may choose to leave and never talk to you again and die. That's the hardest part, is let, like learning that love is letting people go and letting them make choices. Spending time in Manenberg helped me understand a bit about the portal's decision to stay here. Their friendships are clearly real and they challenge the stereotypes and fear that still persist here. The main part of the work in this still quite divided or very divided and very unequal nation is friendships that disrupt the single story narratives. We have been irrevocably changed by the life and the community that we live uh, within and um, we wouldn't swap it for the world. And while there is the hope of new beginnings instead of the usual pain and tragedy, the portals are choosing to stay. The portals admit that many of the people they help do go on to relapse after they leave their home. But they say that's not proof of failure, that's proof that more needs to be done to support them.